Live from the Four Seasons Clift Hotel in San Francisco, it's The Larry King Show, a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System. The Larry King Show features interviews with interesting guests from around the world and telephone calls from across North America. And now, from the Yosemite Room, ladies and gentlemen, Larry King. Thank you very much, and welcome to the second night of our three-night trip here to beautiful San Francisco. Under the auspices of Magic 61 Radio, we're here for another night with outstanding lineup of guests tonight. Our hosts are KFRC, and we're at the Four Seasons Clift Hotel. It is the only five-star hotel in San Francisco. It's also the only five-diamond hotel. And for those of you from Brooklyn, the only five-sewer hotel, the only five-brick hotel. In fact, if you ask Stan Bromley, who's the general manager, it is the only hotel in San Francisco. But it's a magnificent place, the Four Seasons Clift. We have a wonderful crowd, and what a lineup of guests tonight. Charles Schultz is going to live forever, isn't he? As long as there's uh, Peanuts and uh, Lucy Brown and, and Charlie and Snoopy. Charlie Brown, what a part of the culture. The creator of Peanuts, Charles Schultz, will be with us. Mayor Art Agnos, the new mayor of the city of San Francisco. Bob Lurie. The owner of the San Francisco Giants will be with us. Warren Hinkle, who writes for the San Francisco Examiner and is the only man to dislike both Mayor Agnus and Mr. Lurie. And uh, Scott Ross, who works with uh, the Lucas people. They make things like Star Wars, and he's one of those guys that think in those terms. We'll be taking questions from our studio audience. We'll wind up things tomorrow night with Sylvia Chase, one of the best reporters in this country. Henry Lewin, who is unto himself the new owner of the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas, and the great Stan Getz. On the Best of King this Sunday night, the guests will be Fred Dreyer, Tommy Lasorda, and Ike Pappas. Saturday night, of course, the Jim Bohannon Show. Jim will host this program on Monday night with a major program on nursing. We'll be in Los Angeles for the National Cable Television Association Convention, then back in Washington Tuesday night with Larry Speaks, the former press secretary to uh, Ronald Reagan. It's also nice to have Don and Relda Farber in the room, my old and dear friend. They operate Hogan's Cafe, in the South San Francisco produce market. It is to the produce market what the Cliff Four Seasons is to the city. Very similar kind of place. Similar food, but not the same prices. We welcome to our microphones, ladies and gentlemen, Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts. <laughs> Pat Piper and I were just looking at this drawing on the front page of You Don't Look 35, Charlie Brown, of, of, of Charlie. That face, that hat, one of the most famous, I guess, can you tell me about its this creation? When I was a little kid, I used to think that I was such a plain little kid that if I were walking down the street, and uh, Saint, you know this was in St. Paul, Minnesota, and I were not, I was not in school. That if somebody saw me, they wouldn't recognize me because my face was so ordinary. They'd just walk right on by me, and that's what Charlie Brown's face is supposed to be. It's supposed to be just kind of a round, nothing face, and all of the other characters are supposed to be people who have more personality in their faces, but poor Charlie Brown just has uh, what they call a, a face face. It's just a nothing a face. A face face. <laughs> yeah. he, is he is you? Well, they're all a little bit me, I think. Uh, Charlie Brown is probably about 51% of me, and I'm a little bit uh, more or less all of the other characters. How did its creation begin? Were you, a, by the way, were you, a, were you a working cartoonist before Peanuts? I was working for the uh, Art Instruction Correspondence course, the one that has the Draw Me ads. You were in that? I was, uh, my friend Charlie Brown and I were the ones who used to give out the final awards. If you sent in uh, a drawing of this girl that you saw in all the magazines or... <laughs> and in uh, matchbooks. In matchbooks, yeah. Charlie Brown and I were the ones who made the final decision. And uh, he was the one who, from whom I got the name. Wow. But that's where I was working right after World War II. I started off as a temporary instructor. I had taken their course when I was a senior in high school. And then uh, they hired me as an instructor. And I was there for five years and used to take the train down to Chicago from St. Paul to try to sell my drawings, get rejected, go back home, and that kind of thing, until finally one day I, uh, I sold something. Uh, and that was what? That was a cartoon to the Saturday Evening Post. I got $40 for it. And uh, I came home. I used to get my mail in my dad's barber shop. And there was a little note this day. And it said, check Tuesday for spot drawing of boy on lounge. And I thought it meant that I should check on Tuesday because they were sending it back. And <laughs> that night, my dad and I were having dinner together, and I thought about it, and I said, you know, I think I'm wrong. I think this means they're going to send me a check on Tuesday. And sure enough, I got a check for $40, and that was my first major sale. The idea, did you do a strip before Peanuts? I had drawn all sorts of things. Uh, 
when I came back from World War II, I even did some war cartoons. I wanted to do anything, but I, it had to be a comic strip. I didn't care what it was. I just, uh, I ended up drawing kids because kids is what sold. I really had no intention of drawing little kids, but it just turned out that whatever sense of humor I have just seemed to work best when it was jammed into the, the heads of those little tiny bodies. Do you remember the first Peanuts drawing? Well, the first one that w appeared in October of 1950 showed uh, Shermie and Patty sitting on a curb, and Charlie Brown is coming off in the distance, and Shermie says, uh, here comes Charlie Brown, good old Charlie Brown. Yes, sir, good old Charlie Brown. And as he walks by, by he says, uh, how I hate him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, I would never draw that cartoon <laughs> today, but that's that was the first one. And you called it Peanuts? No, the syndicate called it Peanuts. I think it's probably the worst name ever thought of for a comic strip, but I couldn't think of anything else. Uh, originally, it was supposed to have been called Little Folks, but there had been somebody else. In fact, he lived out here named Tack Knight, who had used the name Little Folks. So United Feature Syndicate said, we can't do that. Think of another name. And they suggested Peanuts, which I said is a terrible name. But who was I, a young unknown from St. Paul? Well, why, was, why was it terrible? It's, right. it's um, <clears throat> first place is not appropriate. Uh, I think the strip has more dignity to it than to be called by a name like Peanuts. Also, it's misleading because it gives the people the impression that uh, there's a character named Peanuts. And I don't think people ever refer to little kids as Peanuts. It's just, uh, I just hate the name. Don't ask me anymore. Okay, <laughs> I don't hate it. You absolutely hate I, it. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. In <laughs> retrospect, Charles, you will agree that there's a kind of genius about it, isn't it? Uh, no, no. <laughs> you hate it. <laughs> he still hates no, it. I still hate it. <laughs> <laughs> all the way to the bank, he hates it. Uh, Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, and uh, all those wonderful characters will be taking questions from the audience. We'll talk more about uh, Snoopy and Lucy and Charlie and the gang and Beethoven and hockey and baseball. You have a rink, right? I have what has been termed by none other than Peggy Fleming herself as the world's most beautiful ice arena. Which is where? It's up in Santa Rosa. And uh, I actually brought my choreographer along tonight, Karen Kresge, and she choreographs all of our ice shows that we do here. And my daughter Amy, who has starred in some of them, and we put on some wonderful shows up there. And we have a full skating program, and it is literally the world's most beautiful ice arena. And you play hockey? I uh, except on September 10th, I lost an inside edge and tore up my knee. I lost the uh, anterior cruciate ligament, and so I haven't been able to play hockey since September. You know what that is? Okay. The Antusia Christian. Yeah. Of course, we're heart people, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. You have a heart too? I had, I lost, uh, I got four new arteries. Before you, I beat you again. <laughs> <laughs> in, in a lot of ways. But I, I still have my quadruple la super well, Good for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can I'll, play on my team then. I'll keep mine forever. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back with this idiocy and <laughs> our destruction of the title. What a terrible name, Peanuts. It'll never sell. <laughs> Charles Schultz is our guest. First, these messages. Thank you very much. We're back with Charlie Schultz, the creator of Peanuts. By the way, that uh, the show, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, which I saw uh, off-Broadway when it opened, I think the week it opened, is what, the most performed musical in American history? It's the most performed musical. I think every high school, church, college, kindergarten in the world has performed this thing. And what's good about it is it takes such a beating, you know, no matter what they do to it, uh, it somehow good. survives. Yeah. 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 <laughs> The success of it. Let's get into first the success. How many papers is it in? Oh, about 2,200 or something like that. I'm not sure. We started with seven in October of 1950. You do how many a week? Oh, every day. I've been doing them every day for 37 years. Seven a week? Seven a week, right. yeah. How far ahead? Right now I'm drawing the daily strip for the last week in June, and I guess the Sunday page would be someplace in July, which is not too far ahead. How many offshoots, like how many books have been printed, uh, the strip books, collection books? Uh, I think we've sold about 300 million Peanuts books, which is kind of hard to believe when you walk into your average store and you, all you see is Garfield. <laughs> 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 how many little Snoopy pins have been sold at exit counters well, I wouldn't have by registers? Slightest. I wouldn't have the slightest... You know, I don't pay much attention to that kind of thing. Uh, Merchandising. Yeah, I have editorial control, and I see everything when it is presented to us, but I don't pay much attention. I feel that my job is to try to draw the strip as well as I can every day, and, uh, and many, everything else will How work. many television specials? Oh, I guess about 50, because we did some Saturday morning ones, so I lost track when we started doing Saturday morning things, but I know we've done about 30 mm -hmm. of the evening specials. Now, you don't obviously... Look obvious, you don't have to draw... I'm not an animator. Uh, 
I write all of the animated shows, but of course they're done by Bill Melendez down in Hollywood. They say it takes 30,000 drawings for a half-hour show, and I don't have time to make 30,000 drawings. <laughs> you also don't have to do the strip anymore. I mean, you don't oh, do it oh, for, for financial need. Oh, I don't know. I do it because I have to do it. I, I draw the strip for the same reason that people play the piano or paint pictures or do watercolors. It's the only thing I know how to do. Uh, I draw every strip. I think of every idea. I letter every word. I, I'd quit before I'd let somebody else touch the strip. You don't have assistants? No, 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 no. no, no. Don't, would Arnold Palmer have somebody hit nine irons for him? That's what I always <laughs> <laughs> But a lot of cartoonists, because they get to be in industry, if they get successful, yeah. have guys who can draw. I know Al yeah. Cap had guys who drew a little Abner. Yeah, well, he couldn't draw girls very well, oddly enough. So he had somebody else. Mm -hmm. But I don't know much about the way Al, uh, you know, Al was a, a comic strip genius. I don't know much about the way he worked, but I think it is a mistake. I simply see no reason why a person should have somebody else doing his work for him. So if I see a Peanuts, you drew it. That's right. That's right. Uh, it's popularity. Does it surprise you? Oh, no. <laughs> Anymore. Uh, it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. I wanted to draw a good comic strip. I wanted to draw something that would be regarded someday uh, as good as Crazy Cat. Th that's what I wanted to do. I don't know if I have or not, but um, that was my ambition. Your introduction of sports into it. Hockey, for example. Yeah, ho Nobody puts yeah. hockey in a strip. No, I know. Nobody puts Thomas Hardy in a comic strip either. Or nobody, Beethoven. Nobody puts Beethoven and puts the actual music. You know, Schroeder, when he plays Ein Grosso Sonata für das Hammerklavier, those are the real notes that he's playing. Yeah, and I get tired of drawing those notes sometimes, too, but... <laughs> you are a little crazy, aren't you? Uh, yeah, but, you but it's fun, yeah. <laughs> That's because you like hockey, and you like Beethoven, yes. and you like Thomas Hardy. Yes, yes. And, and uh, baseball. Baseball is a perfect sport because you don't have to show any action. All you have to show is poor Charlie Brown standing on the mound with this crazy right fielder he has, uh, Lucy walking up and saying dumb things to him. So uh, it's, it's a perfect... Golf works very well, too. I, I could draw golf cartoons forever. But, How about uh, the annual, she holds the ball and takes it away when he kicks it? She's been doing that now for, uh, I think, about 32 years, and he still hasn't caught on. He still swipes, she still takes the ball away. That's called real faith in human nature. <laughs> Ideas. Uh, are there days they don't come? Yes. In fact, two days ago, I couldn't think of anything. I just sit there, and uh, I fall asleep trying to think of ideas. But then I'll, you know... I, I, you get to be kind of professional about it, and you learn that uh, maybe tomorrow you'll think of the funniest thing you've ever thought of in your life. So I don't worry about it. I just get annoyed by it because it's an afternoon or a morning wasted when you could have been doing something. Do you think you might work Charlie Brown somewhere into the Baltimore Orioles? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't well, he be a wonderful... He'd be a fan of the Orioles, wouldn't he? Yeah, let's see. If I'm drawing in July and they haven't won anything <laughs> by then, <laughs> uh, that'd be a good idea, yeah. Charles Schultz is our guest. At the bottom of the hour, we'll have roving microphones, and you can ask anything you want of a true American creative genius, the creator of Peanuts, back after these messages. Our guest is the creator of Peanuts, the wonderful Charles Schultz. Later, we'll meet uh, Mayor Art Agnos, the mayor of San Francisco, and Bob Lurie, the owner of the Giants, Warren Hinkle, the columnist of the San Francisco Examiner, and Scott Ross of Lucas Films, and we'll talk about things like uh, Star Wars. Did you ever venture off to do other kinds of strips? I did a strip called uh, It's Only a Game for a couple of years, but it got to be too much work. And I also did um, youth cartoons for religious publications for seven years, but uh, then I got too old and I ran out of uh, ideas. I couldn't think of what it was like to be a youth in a church, so I, uh, <laughs> I quit drawing them. <laughs> you never get tired of it? Not drawing, uh, no. I really don't. What about the characters? I mean, okay, you do it and you love it and but uh, Arnold Palmer, there's got to be days when he says, I don't feel like hitting the ball. I mean, oh. do, you all, do you like Charlie? Do you well, still like him? I like all of the characters who appear. If some characters have been in the strip and don't appear anymore, it's simply because they didn't give me any ideas or I just don't like drawing them uh, anymore, that's all. But the ones who appear the most are the ones that I like, and I like about ten of them. I enjoy drawing Peppermint Patty, for instance. I, I enjoy drawing her when she's sound asleep in school, and she wakes up and says, I'm awake, I'm awake, you know. <laughs> Is Lucy your favorite? No, 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 no. I don't even like Lucy, but um, <laughs> uh, she gives me so many ideas I really have to. I feel kind of sorry for her in a, in a way. You know, all my, my strip is filled with unrequited love. Mm -hmm. Lucy likes Schroeder. He hates her. And uh, Sally likes Linus, and he hates Sally. Charlie Brown likes the little red-haired girl who doesn't know that he even exists. So uh, n nothing ever happens. It's all unrequited. Like a peanut gallery. 
It's like real life. You won't even <laughs> see. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. I'll tell you how popular it is that you may not know. This was uh, some years back. Your syndicate, who syndicates it? United Features. United Features asked for a, an increase from the Miami Herald for the whatever the Herald was paying for peanuts per week. So the managing editor of the Herald, in a genius idea, said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to test the popularity of that strip. I mean, they want us to pay more. How do we know? You know, we circulate every day. So I'm going to leave it out Tuesday. Fatal move. Not going to run it. <laughs> Fatal move. They broke the switchboard. No calls could get through. No editors could get calls out. They paid the increase. Uh, it is the most popular strip ever drawn, is it not? I like to think so. Well, we're, we're in the Guinness Book of Records as being in, we're in more newspapers than any other newspaper feature in the history of the business. That makes in me feel good. In the history of the business. In the history of the newspaper business. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, it would also be the most read thing every day since the comic yeah. page usually leads. I see. Well, they tell me a hundred million people read it every day. And that's not bad for somebody whose cartoons were rejected from his high school annual. <laughs> They yeah, were? Yeah. What is the one similar trait <laughs> through all cartoonists? You are all a little weird, right? I mean, there is a, there's a weird kind. I, I, I've met many. Yeah. And there's a trait. Like, as soon as I met you in five minutes, you, you have the same kind of trait. I can't pin it down. What do you think it is? You must know. You have a society. I th well, yeah, the National Cartoonist Society. They do. Yeah. They meet these guys. <laughs> they honest. They meet together. They do drawings on each other. Yeah, I never meet with them. I, I hang around by myself. <laughs> <laughs> but there is uh -huh. a common thread. Yeah, I, I, don't, I really don't know what it is. I think we just like to draw, that's all. I, um, I think we were just kids that kind of goofed off in school and drew pictures on the edge of their uh, their notebooks and things of that kind of thing. Or is there yeah. no Phi Beta Kappa cartoonists? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> no. uh -uh. Uh, guys got into trouble a lot, right? Most cartoonists had teachers say, What are you doing, Charlie? And they were drawing somebody in class. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Charlie Schultz is our guest, the brilliant creator of Peanuts. We're going to pause for news headlines. A word from your local stations. We'll come back. And Pat Piper will roll with the microphones and we'll take questions from the audience for the creator of, uh, of Charlie Brown and Lucy and Snoopy and that whole gang that you know and he hates the name Peanuts. Charles Schultz, this is the Larry King Show in San Francisco on the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you very much. We're back. At the beautiful uh, Four Seasons Cliffs Hotel. We kid a lot about the Four Seasons and, and uh, Stan Bromley, but he's one of the great hotel men in America. They know him everywhere. And he is general manager of this spot, which is part of... This name really belies chains. The Four Seasons is a chain. But that's the last part where it is like that because they're so individual and they really are a wonderful group of hotels and they're always so nice to us here, Los Angeles and elsewhere. It's just that Mr. Bromley excels at his craft. And this is a five-star hotel and a five-diamond hotel. And our host station is, in my opinion, the best nostalgic music station in America. I got a chance to do an hour there today. KFRC, Magic 61, for a super outlet. And our guest is the most successful cartoonist ever, Charles Schultz, <laughs> Charles Schultz the lady. Since Lucy is one of your main characters, um, was there ever a Lucy in your life? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh... I don't think so. There was one of our daughters whom we used to refer to as a fuss budget now and then, but I've never patterned any of the characters after anyone that I know. I, I've used a lot of names. Uh, for It seems to help uh, you become familiar with the characters when you're drawing them. Also, you can't be sued because somebody, you know, there are idiots out there who think you, you're stealing <laughs> their work and their ideas and things like that, but I can say no. I named it after a friend of mine. Did you name Lucy Brown after a Lucy? Uh, in a way, but not, not totally. But Charlie Brown, yes. Well, Charlie Brown was a very close friend of mine who died a few years ago, and uh, we were very close, but I used his name. I asked him, I can still th remember the day I said, do you care if I use your name? And he says, no, and he came walking across the room because we worked in the educational department of this correspondence school, and he looked down, and he says, is that the character? And I says, yeah. He says, oh, I was hoping I'd look more like Steve Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman. Um... We've grown up with your cartoons, with many of your characters, and this isn't a vindictive question. This is just, um, why is Snoopy selling insurance is kind of the question. We grew Pardon? up with him and we love him and we love these characters, but why is Snoopy selling insurance? That's just... Oh, I suppose it's because they offered us a very good deal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, it's... It <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> no, he's this implying is, that this is yeah, a little bit of a cop-out. But this is not a pure art form. This is uh, a business. I work for newspaper editors to help them sell their newspapers. My cartoons 
well, I can't say they don't ha hang in art galleries because they have now for the last three years has been a touring show, but we're not regarded as pure art. We are a commercial product, and when people say you've gone commercial, how can you go commercial with something which is already commercial? Now, I've received some letters of criticism, but these have been mainly from people who hate insurance companies. Uh, and I hated them, too, a few months ago when they raised my, uh, my Iserene insurance to over $100,000. I hated them. But... Um, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm obligated to United Feature Syndicate. They've got rent to pay in New York, you know, and all those things. So, uh, uh, I don't know. What can I say? Yeah, in other words, it, it, it's, it's, that's what, this is a commercial business and you're yeah. drawing commercial. It could be worse, you know. <laughs> the lady. <laughs> How did Woodstock evolve and why did you make uh, that character a bird? I mean, where did Woodstock come from? I was drawing birds in the strip for quite a while before I named Woodstock uh, by that name. But I didn't draw them very well, and uh, the bird started off really to be Snoopy's secretary. And then one day I was looking through Life magazine, reading about the Woodstock Festival, and I thought it'd make a good name for the bird. Suddenly, the little girl secretary turned into a boy and was Snoopy's, has been Snoopy's friend ever since. That's the only reason. Oh, uh, follow up? I'm sorry. The, 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 the philosophy, the character. I don't know what the philosophy of any of them really is. I just draw it from day to day, literally. Really? Yeah, I never even think about it. And people you don't say, think about... No, no, people say, I love your philosophy. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that air that we read into it, we're reading into it. Yes, and I think that's all right. Uh, I think it's like reading uh, novels or short stories. Do you know that people have written long intellectual pieces about Peanuts? Yeah. That uh, the New Yorker once did a piece where they described it as sort of the iconoclastic look at life in our times. It's been described as communistic. It's been described <laughs> as fascist. Uh -huh. It's been described as right wing and left wing. It's I'm been just trying to get it to the post office before it closes. <laughs> 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 the lady. Where did you ever get the uh, inspiration for the Sopwith Camel and the World War I Flying Ace? My son, uh, I have five children, and one of the boys was making model airplanes, and he came up to my studio one day when he was 14, and he was showing me the latest model, and it happened to be a Fokker triplane. And we began to talk about the World War I movies that I saw when I was a kid, like uh, um, oh. Hell's Angels and Dawn Patrol, and all of a sudden it just occurred to me, why not put Snoopy on the doghouse and let him pretend he's a World War I flying ace? Now, my son Monty says he thought of the idea. I said... No, I thought of the idea, and we can't decide who thought of it. But anyway, that's how it began. And the Red Baron. The Red Baron. Uh, and the, the, the thing around the, the neck, right? The, yeah, yeah. Those were great movies. Yeah, I used to see them when I was a little kid. Do you put a different emphasis on the Sunday Strip? The Sunday Strip really should have more action in it, if it is possible. Uh, of course, what newspaper editors are doing to Sunday pages these days is a really crime. What do you mean? Uh, you don't have any room to work anymore. They're shrinking them down, and... Uh, we used to get a whole page of, uh, you know, squares to work in. Now you're lucky if you get a half page, a third page, and they're reducing some of the Sunday pages down to, to a sixth page. Now you take somebody like Milt Kniff, who just died. Uh, they were destroying Steve Canyon, and they're, they're destroying Prince Valiant because it only runs a third page. You used to get a whole page to work out those beautiful scenes on. Uh, and it's, it's something which is a mystery to me. What was it about the Sunday paper when... Uh, Bringing up father and the oh, cats and jamma kids yeah. were on the front page of your Sunday section. To me, it was what life was all about because uh, we subscribed to two papers in St. Paul, and on Saturday night, my dad would drive up to the local drugstore and buy the two Minneapolis papers so we could get four comic sections to read. And that was what life was about to me. <laughs> but it was to all of us. There's a special sure. thing about the Sunday comics. Mm -hmm. Mayor LaGuardia in New York reading them during the newspaper strike. Yeah. Yep. There's a, the, a special, that texture is still there. It's a reminder of our childhood, isn't it, when the Sunday paper comes? I think so, and there's still a magic to it to me. I still love to look at, uh, at the old comic strips, like you mentioned, Bringing Up Father with its beautiful uh, pen lines and the wonderful mm. things. He used to draw chandeliers so marvelously. And, of course, um, Popeye. You know, there was, there was never a greater strip than Popeye. Great strip. Blondie wasn't a bad strip. Blondie was good in its day, yes. The Cats and Jamma Kids. And the Captain and the Kids, yeah. Captain and great, the Kids. Great why, why was uh, Popeye the perfect strip? Well, it had a perfect combination of writing and uh, innocence and drawing. Uh, I've never been able quite to define what is good comic strip drawing. People who are illustrators do not always make good comic strip artists. There's, uh, the best word that I can use is effective. 
Uh, your drawing must be effective. It doesn't have to be good. I mean, uh, you, you talk about even another branch of cartooning. Why was James Thurber's drawing so wonderful? Mm. Uh, it was effective. You know, nobody could draw as well as James Thurber, and yet nobody could draw as badly as James Thurber. How do you rate yourself? Are you a good drawer? Yeah, I, uh, I'm not as good as... Um, as Milt Kniff was, but in, in my, I think I draw very well. I've got a good pen line. Uh, my hands are kind of shaky these days, but I could still whip out a good pen line. Is the art as important as the idea? The art is much more important more than important. people realize. Yes, it's much more important because, uh, uh, well, the best example of that is the recent popularity of Calvin and Hobbes now. Suddenly everyone is talking about Calvin and Hobbes, and it is simply because it is drawn uh, in a pleasing manner. You like to look at it. It's fun to look at. It's a little bit reminiscent of Walt Kelly's drawing with his nice brush technique, but you have to have good drawing. Otherwise, you kill your ideas. Is the far side well drawn? The far side is very well drawn. It's funny. The animals are funny looking. The people are funny looking. And uh, that's what makes it, makes it successful, certainly. And he's going to be committed, isn't he? Larson, they're going to have to put him away. I'll sign the papers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with Charles Schultz of Peanuts fame following these messages. We're back, and our guest is uh, Charles Schultz, the creator of uh, Peanuts. Peanuts is 37 years old. A gentleman. Hi, Sparky. Um, I've been uh, reading your strip, uh, well, I was born about two years after the strip started, so I've been reading those four little panels for a long time. And I think you may have already answered my question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Until very recently, the strip was done the daily strip was done in four panels. Recently, it's gone down to three, and sometimes I've even seen two. Was there any particular reason for the change? Yes, and I appreciate that you've uh, been observant enough to notice it. Uh, United Feature Syndicate, I still think, did not have any faith in the future of the Peanuts comic strip, and it was sold with the marketing gimmick of being a space-saving strip. All four uh, panels were to be equal, so the strip could be run by an editor either horizontally, vertically, or in the square, or it could be run back in the one ads, any place they wanted. <laughs> and after 37 years, just a few months ago, I thought, well, who am I saving space for after all these years? I'm going to draw the same size as a real cartoonist. And so I'm drawing bigger now, and I have more fun that way. I've got more room for the lettering. I can draw the characters larger, and it's just kind of given me some new, uh, new enjoyment. You mean Peanuts was like a... a they were, they were using it as like a bargain basement thing, yeah. and they didn't have faith in it. No, I don't think so. No. A lady. Did you invent the word arg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, when, the, when the characters scream in agony, it's a a u g h or something like that, which is ah! <laughs> uh, I don't know if I invented it, but I sure use it a lot. Uh, gentlemen. What's Peppermint Patty's last name? Uh, Reichhardt, named after uh, one of my secretaries. And which came first, the candy or the character? The candy. I was walking through the living room of our house one day and I saw some peppermint patties in a dish and I thought that would make a good name for a girl character. And so I thought I'd better use it quick before Mort Walker thinks of it. <laughs> the gentleman. Uh, I'm going to buy a home in Santa Rosa. Might my new neighbors be Charlie Brown? Well, that's a hard one. How should I know? <laughs> well, yeah, do you mean, does he live in Santa Rosa? Yes. Oh, yeah, I live in Santa Rosa, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I died laughing as a, as a kid uh, at the word patui. Do you remember using that? P-T-U-I? Yeah, I think maybe Snoopy did it or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long time ago. In what connection was it used? Uh, Snoopy was... Uh, expectorated something and yeah. it was patooey or he, he now refrains from such vulgarities <laughs> <laughs> do you have an old dog like that yes i had a dog very much like snoopy when i was about 13 his name was spike and he was a wild uncontrollable dog and he had a large vocabulary of words that he understood and snoopy is patterned a little bit after spike the gentleman uh, incidentally, Larry, uh, uh, Lafayette High School, 1960. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Schultz, uh, could you please uh, address uh, w what do you think about Doonesbury and uh, Bloom County? Uh, Doonesbury, a little heavy-handed. How anybody can think that he can insult 50% of the readers every day and still be popular is beyond me. And how anybody can demand a lot of space to work in and then draw the White House four times in a row is beyond me. But beyond that, uh, I, know <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I know Gary very well. I like him a lot. Uh, I just don't think he draws very well. Now, Burke Brethren draws a little bit better. Uh, but what do I, you know, I don't know. How do you classify them, in the political arena or in the cartoon arena? 
well, whatever they think. Uh, it, it doesn't matter to me. I just, um, I just don't go for that kind of thing. I could never draw political things because um, if somebody took me out to lunch, I'd never be able to draw something against him. I'm an easy mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you never wanted to do anything in that vein? I don't like to hurt people. No, I really don't like to hurt people. And I think that I bend over as far backwards as you can uh, to keep from being offensive. Do you have a favorite political cartoonist? Bill Malden, I suppose. Uh, every uh, November 11th, Snoopy goes over to Bill's house and they quaff a few root beers together and, uh, for old times' sake, World War II's sake. Yeah. And Bill always writes to me and asks for the original. I never met Bill until just uh, a couple years ago, but I think his World War II cartoons were unsurpassed. Speaking of that, what do you do with your originals? Uh, I save them. Uh, we, oh, I hate to say this, but <laughs> we give them to uh, charities every now and then if the people spell my name right and write a nice letter. If they write, Dear Celebrity, uh, then I don't <laughs> send them anything. But you'll but, sell uh, them an original for them to sell it for their charity. We, I'll give them away, yeah. but very rarely. Uh, uh, originals of comic strips have suddenly become very popular. It didn't, they didn't used to be in the old days. The syndicate just threw them away, tossed them around on the floor, didn't care what happened to them. But now, for some reason, a lot of them are real collector's items. What, would a, what is it worth? The, I would say my Sunday pages right now are worth uh, about $1,500 a piece, and the daily strips uh, are sold up in um, Connecticut at the Museum of Cartoon Art, I think, for $600 a piece. That's, just not, that's not bad for somebody whose cartoons were rejected from the high school annual. <laughs> that ain't bad at all. What would the original Peanuts be worth? I don't have any idea, and I don't. I wish. Where I is it? I don't have any. I, I just don't know. It just got uh, thrown away, or maybe somebody has it someplace. I don't know. A lady. Your humor, it could be uh, whimsy. It could be bizarre. Uh, is that the key element for someone that is a cartoonist? You have to look at life on the rise side, obviously. I think that's why there are no child prodigies in cartooning because you cannot. Uh, do really decent work until you've lived long enough to see uh, what is funny about life and what is tragic about life. And I think a change of pace is very important, which is why I have a lot of different characters. I think uh, I don't keep striking the same note every day. I play on the whole keyboard, and I think this is very important. All 88. Um, would you say also the, the simplicity in your drawing, does that help a little bit? You, you've commented a little bit about some of the other people that are drawing cartoons, but you are very simple in your drawing. Yeah, but the simplicity is a little more difficult than it looks. I think uh, it's important that the reader knows exactly what the character is expressing at that particular moment, and I think this is where many of them fall down, uh, to be able to, you know, I do, I do not do what is referred to as inking in, where you would pencil something in and then trace over the lettering. I don't know what that expression is until the very second that that pen draws the expression. I feel the expression as I'm drawing it, and I think that's important. Most ink in, right? I suppose, yeah. yeah. That's a terrible expression. But yeah, there is a word for it, but the most do that, right? Th yes, that's right. That's yours, what, yeah. yours is a happening. Then. I think you should be drawing with the pen rather than inking in. You should pencil just enough to sort of block things out so you get them spaced properly, but then you should be drawing with the pen. Do you surprise you? Oh, yeah, I disappoint me, too. <laughs> Charles Schultz is our guest. Peanuts is 37 years old. He's from this neck of the woods. That should not surprise you. This is a very special neck of the woods, Northern California. We'll be back after these messages. Our guest is the great Charles Schultz, creator of Peanuts. The gentleman. I understand your works were at one time rejected by Walt Disney, and I was wondering if you ever met Walt Disney, and whether you think there are any common threads between your characters and the Disney characters that have enabled them to live so long. I applied for uh, Walt Disney when I first got out of high school. I just sent in one of their applications, and they sent back a little thing you filled out, made some drawings, and I got turned down. But that's as far as the story goes, so I can't really say that I've been rejected by him at a point where I was doing something worthwhile. And I never met Walt, which is one of the great regrets of my life. I don't like being referred to. Some people, I, I suppose they're being flattering. They say, uh, gee, you're, you know, you're the second Walt Disney. I don't want to be the second Walt Disney. I want to draw a good comic strip. Walt was a producer, and a fine one. I'm not a producer. 
I like to think of myself as a cartoonist. When a character becomes legendary, can we pin it down? Why, why do we like Mickey Mouse so much? Well, he's well drawn. Mickey Mouse is uh, first. He's well drawn. Well drawn. Uh, beyond that, it's very difficult to say because uh, I think a good cartoon character and a comic strip should be quotable, and we can't remember anything that Mickey Mouse has ever said. Uh, but he's cute, and beyond that, right. it's, he has it's kind never of a said mystery. anything memorable. It's, 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 well, I Whereas think Donald Duck, well, major yeah, heavy yeah. stuff, Donald. Duck. <laughs> <laughs> promotion too, you know, a lot of promotion. <laughs> The lady again. All right. Uh, what, what, do you do any sort of art other than cartoons? No. I, I, and what do you like to read? I never... Now and then if I'm on vacation, which I rarely am on, I might take a felt pen along and a sketch pad and draw some houses or trees. And then I, all of a sudden it occurs to me, drawing is kind of fun. Uh, I always forget how much fun drawing can be. But beyond that, I couldn't paint a picture or do a watercolor for anything. You couldn't? No. You're a cartoonist. I'm a cartoonist. Do you like to, what kind of, do you like to read novels? Oh, you well, love Elmore Leonard, right? Oh, I love Elmore. I just finished it, and I, uh, I read all the time. I like um, all Detectives. sorts of, yeah, and uh, I'm just reading the new Marquez novel, and I like uh, some of the, the women writers. Uh, can't think of their name. Uh, do you read, do you look at cartoons like I look at cartoons, or do you look at them as, how would I have drawn this? I look at them very critically. Uh, and I always think, uh, why did he do that? You know, that's not very funny, and he could have done this better or something <laughs> like that. And then I feel guilty for being critical. But I, I am, I'm a fanatic about it. Uh, my daughter Amy, who is here with me tonight, described me, I think, uh, best when she came into the studio once a couple of years ago, and she wanted to know how far ahead I was, and I told her and where I was working, and she says, Dad, you know what you are? You're obsessed. And I think... Uh, that if I have had any success drawing the strip, it is because I am obsessed by it. Uh, it. It's my whole life. I think about it all the time. When you had your heart surgery, mm -hmm. did you draw ahead? Yes, because I wasn't sure if I was going to have nerve enough to do it, so I worked very hard and didn't do any autographing or telephone calls or things for a couple of months. I got three months ahead of my publication date, and as it was, uh, as it turned out, I only used up a month, so that was pretty good. I came back home, and um, my hands were kind of shaky. I couldn't draw for several weeks, but that's uh, the only time that I lost. In what paper do you read Peanuts? I read it in the Chronicle in the uh, morning, and then our Press Democrat up in Santa Rosa also runs it. Do you look at it every day? Oh, yes, because I like to, uh, I like to look at it in the way that I think the reader will be looking at it uh, as he or she picks up her morning paper. Do you always remember it? No, uh, if I were to have to tell you what strips I mailed out yesterday, I would have a hard time remembering them. Once they're in the mail, I, f I forget about them completely, and then I, I see them in the proofs when they come back, and I think, oh, now why did I do that? Or That was pretty good. How did I think of that? <laughs> and when you see them in the paper, you remember them again. Then I remember them again, yes. This has been a great honor. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> great My honor. honor. Charles Schultz, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the creator of Peanuts. 37 years old. He's a special guy. We're going to play.